Nerves to everyone. So Moshe says that this week's parsha. And the purpose is There's a covenant. So I'm going to force you to discuss what covenant is he talking about? From the Torah itself, it seems obvious that this is a new covenant. In fact, we'll have later that the Torah says, Milvad Abris Asher Korasim on That was one covenant, now seven Ishma. Now, before they enter Israel and they come to Argrizim and Harevo, and they're going to say Omen to all the Brochus and Kolos. So there's a new covenant. What does this covenant entail? And it seems that the covenant is more far-reaching because Moshe will say in the parsha that it covers It covers those that are here and those that are not here. How can you have a covenant that someone doesn't even know about? I never agreed to it. Not part of it. So uh, there's a long discussion amongst all the Mephorshim as to the idea of the covenant that we're talking about here. Rashi makes an allusion to the fact that until they came there to Israel, uh, they uh, they were not the covenant did not include the nistarot sins that were committed that were not public and now uh, part of the covenant is that they are bound even on uh, those uh, uh, sins that were committed but the the orachayimir and the kliyokar and uh, most of the Mephorshim look at it in a perhaps a more simplistic, but uh, eventually more complicated way. They say until now, the covenants were all covenants of individuals. It's a covenant that a person agreed to, and he was part of it. And what he did did not necessarily affect what others did. <clears throat> so uh, the classic example is always someone that is on a ship and he has a seat and he wants to dig a hole under the deck of the seat that he's sitting in. So he's not allowed to do that because the whole boat will sink. But until now, apparently, there were individual covenants. Even when given to cloud soil generally. For him say, that's why it says, Vayan Kolon, Nasev and Ishma. Everybody's agreed to it. People that didn't agree to it were not bound by it. Not only that, what they did does not affect, well, what happens to other people. However, now this covenant is a collective covenant. 
it's a covenant that binds people that I don't even know about. Everyone is included in it. So if a person does a good thing and he brings merit, so then the merit is extended to everyone. And the same thing in reverse. If he does a bad thing, so then the covenant makes everyone liable. And the Medrash uh, derives this idea from the story of Ochon. Ochon was the uh, Azarchi, who was a, uh, when the Jewish people were engaged in the war on Yericho, so they took upon themselves a pledge that they would not take from the booty. And Ochan, uh, he took a fur coat, he took money, silver, whatever he took. And because of that, an eye, which was the next battle, uh, the Jewish people suffered deaths uh, that they had not suffered when they conquered Jericho. And Yoshua was shocked. And then he was told, Omnon Choto Yisrael. The Jewish people have sinned. Jewish people didn't sin, Ochem sinned. But that's the collective covenant. If Ochem sins, then the Jewish people have sinned. So the Orachayim asks a simple question if that's the case. We can never survive, right? How can that be? So he goes in a number of different ways. A majority of the Jewish people sin. So then Rubo Kikulo. Or it's of such a public nature that people should have protested. And they don't protest. And the thing that bothers me the most about uh, all the Saturday night demonstrations outside my window is not only that uh, it's not very melodious, Why don't we have such demonstrations on behalf of good things? We have once a year a big Afghana for Shabbat, or a big Afghana for Zdoka. We have, here you have, uh, look what goes on. So that, uh, or Achaim says, that's part of the judgment. What really bothers us? The Gemara says it very uh, starkly. I'll quote Moser Vadon Mechisem. I'll quote Shemayim Lo Mechisem. You protested because you thought a wrong was done to a human being. You never protest when wrong is done to heaven, so to speak. So that's the measure of the collective covenant. <clears throat> but the Orachayim tempers it. Because again, we don't want to create a situation, especially before Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the Yemei Arachamim Vaslichos, to give us the feeling that we're all doomed. The Boni Shalom will collect all the Averas and hold us liable for them. This <coughs> is me, What can we say? So he says as follows very interesting idea. He says, if you're living in, uh, let us say, uh, 
Yerushalayim in a certain neighborhood, on a certain block, or in a certain synagogue, or in a certain circle of people that you know. And there are sins committed in a different city by people whom you don't know. And people who wouldn't listen to you even if you protested, because who are you? You have no relationship whatsoever to them. So he says the covenant doesn't cover that. You're not liable for that. You're liable for what you could have influenced. So that may include family. That may include friends. It may include neighbors, but I'm not responsible for Elad or for uh, Ofakim or for Haifa. Or for, I'm not that. They don't know me. I don't know them. That far, the collective covenant doesn't go. It's a big Kiddush of the Orachim. But uh, in his path, the Kliyokar follows him almost 100% the same way. So that has to do with the covenant of the living. There's a covenant as I share yes, no imono ayon, as I share nenu imono omed ayon. So the Mephorshim explained that covenant, I think it's readily understandable. What happens later is always a product, a product of what happened before. There is no exact cutoff point in history. And because of that, therefore, what a person does, whether the person wishes it to or not, affects unborn generations that are yet to come especially in one's own family or in one's own circle of people. So therefore, that's also counted. And that's what Chazal mean. Chazal always looked at it on the good side. Loth is saved because hundreds of years later, uh, Dovin Amelech has to come from him. Rus has to come. Namo has to come. So therefore, Loth is saved. He's not saved necessarily on his own merits. On his own merits, he didn't achieve it. He's saved because of a consequence that he himself is unaware of. So that's how the story of Slashem How that works is not clear to us. But it's obvious that that is how it works. And that therefore the observance of the covenant has eternal consequences to it, not just the consequences that occur in one's lifetime. So that's the covenant that the Torah is talking about here in its southern, this great collective covenant that spans time and space, that somehow includes everyone, but not necessarily so. And that's part, really, of how the story of Slashem came. How heaven judges things. But what's clear to us is Lassus is called Ivraya Torah Azos. To live a life of Torah and Torah values and impart it to the surroundings that we can reach. 
רבי חנניה בן עקשי אומר, רוצה הקודש ברוך הוא וזעקוס את ישראל, ופי חרחיר בו להם תורו ומצוות, שנאמר אדוני חטאי צמאי שתקעו, יביאו תורו ויאדיר.